either. However, you have to go and switch from one to the other. So we're preparing the second one. Now, they're going to kick us off the stage shortly because we're also taking up a ground cloth. What we do is we lay uh, all of the ground cloths, which are from up here, up above. If you pick folks up in the balcony, you can see that the color of the floor is a different color. Well, we then lay Act 4 down below, then Act 3, and then Act 1 here on top, so that as we go through the show, we're going to reveal that the next act has been won. There are more than 2,000 tacks that we use on this stage floor every night, just for this particular performance. Do we have a question? We have a question. Our first question comes from Nicola Santoro. She asks, what was the most difficult part of putting together this particular opera? Boy, the most difficult part of putting together this particular opera. I'm only going to answer it from a production point of view. This particular opera, because it has, this is a huge Italian-made opera, which is fantastic. Uh, it actually arrived in about five containers, so everything that you're seeing here tonight has arrived in five containers. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where to walk so that I can start talking to you all. Uh, but what's most difficult is trying to get these seat shifts done. Because we only have so much time to get the scene shifts that wait, okay, wait until you see what we do between acts, what we call two, one, and two, two, which is between acts two and three. I had to run with that one there. <laughs> so, and it, we, we will turn from that set, which you can see, we're rolling down Flora's house, which is act three. We're rolling that downstage to three sets. It's like this big, uh, uh, Tetris game. We move all of Act 1 out, we push all of Act 1 upstage, and then we bring Act 3 downstage to reset it, bring Act 2 on, Act 3 uh, further upstage. So that, I think, is that, that shift from 2 1 to 2 is very tough. Alright, our next question comes from Mira Collier Mitchell. So, how hot is it under these lights? Oh my goodness, you know, we have over 309 lights up here, 40 different colors. 400 cuts of gel, which are the colors that drop inside of them. Uh, it gets mighty warm because there's also over 300 yards of wool that the men wear, and uh, uh, about 600 feet of, uh, of steel wool that the ladies wear inside of those uh, dresses. So sometimes it can get easily 90 to 100 degrees on the stage. So while they're singing, watching the maestro, and the ladies, especially with these large shoes, have to be trained on how to pick those dresses up and move them around. They also are performing flawlessly in front of you all, so it gets very warm up here. And speaking of dresses, our next question is, how heavy are those dresses? Uh, you know, let me check, but I think on the top of my head, if anyone has that backstage, they're going to send it out to me. But it depends upon the dress that we're wearing. But I would guess it's approximately uh, maybe 60 pounds, something. maybe heavier, depending upon the amount of lace on there. Uh, you know, inside of all of the clothes tonight, there's more than three miles of thread put them together. All of these costumes were built by our costume shop right here in San Francisco back in 1987. And the person that's crossing upstage over to the right here is our head problem mistress, uh, Lori Harrison. This was actually Lori's first show on the cross crew back in 1987. She started with us in 1985, so she's getting ready to celebrate her 30th anniversary with the company. Congratulations. <laughs> We're bringing down now Flora's house in order to get a preset left and right because we have to make this quick change, right? So we're going to not break the curtain out for that. So we're going to be working really fast to make the magic happen. We're giving you away a few of the secrets here for you now. We got another question. We got another question from Christy. Christy has, is there anything you prepare differently because of the cycle pass? Uh, we do. We don't do a whole lot differently. We actually have, we have a uh, media crew of 12. We have, I think, 11 cameras around the house. You'll see two over here, two down in front. Uh, and I believe there's three across the back. Uh, all we uh, prepare a little differently is, is we make certain that uh, we're prepared out at at and Park, which I want to send a special thank you out to the Giants for hosting us. Uh, like I said, for the seventh time, we'll see them. We'll get to that and this staff. I tell you, they are a class act. So I really want to thank the Giants for seven times. Over 160,000 people at that ballpark that they've left us produce the opera. 
So we don't do a whole lot of different other than perhaps a couple of different calls in our meeting. All right. I just got word, I just wanted to say the address for 20 pounds. 20 pounds. Well, to me, those hoops and everything, I've never walked in a dress like that, so that to me looks like a tremendous weight, but they handle it gracefully. What do you guys think? How do they do that? see that they, they moved, uh, did you see the black curtain come in and then go back out and they picked up another one and moved it downstage, did you see that? We're moving the different portals for the show. We have over, uh, we have about 78 line sets that are automated. You can see them, oh I wish you guys could see it. You folks over here can see backstage here to our automated line set. Too bad we can't kind of lean it over later and we'll see this. Uh, because it's really amazing. It's, it's uh, the, the uh, line schedule that we have here to bring in all the pipes is the most sophisticated in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, we're really, really proud of them. So they're setting now uh, Act 2. They just brought in two walls, left and right. They're bringing in the upstage and they're setting with guards now. And then after they get this all set, they'll bring in the black fabric here that is the portal that, that uh, frames the whole image, which you'll see in every act. So now you're going to have to watch for it. We put it black so that it would disappear. But now you'll be able to see it in each one of the acts. We'll then settle in the headers. You can see if you're down in front, I'm sorry, I'm scared, you're going to see it in Act uh, 3, we're going to make sure we see it then. But there's a beautiful chandelier that is preset right above so that they can do a quick change. I think that's that quick change that's coming up next. Uh, as well as you're seeing that they're going to start uh, uh, presetting all of those lights backstage. We actually have to go through every day. Tomorrow morning we'll be at, at 7 o'clock to prepare for Madam Butterfly. Have you all seen Madam Butterfly? Oh, see, you have to be back. There's only a couple more shows. We're going to see you back here because it's a fabulous, fabulous production. But we'll be at 7 o'clock tomorrow and everything on Trump Yard will go away. We'll bring in all the Butterfly We'll set that and we'll be ready to go by 12 o'clock and we'll focus uh, for a butterfly about 300 or so lighting instruments as well to set all the scenes. It's really terrific. You should come and watch that sometime. All right. Next question from Melinda McLean. How much time do you get to rehearse an opera like this? Typically, it will take about two and a half weeks. What's really great about opera singers is the opera singers, uh, unlike uh, actors in the theater, opera singers actually uh, arrive and they already know their role. So they're prepared to sing on the first day. We'll rehearse in the rehearsal room about two or two and a half weeks typically, and then we'll have between three and five rehearsals on stage. So it's not a lot of time, but when you have the, the, uh, the world-class performers that we have, the type of stage crew that you're seeing that we have here, we really do make it look easy. Okay, Agent Winderlet asks, how heavy are the wall segments? Well, each one of the wall segments, and actually the technology we built for these has not changed for several hundred years. We actually call the walls flats, and if you saw them come downstage, you notice that they were only about an inch or an inch and a half thick. Ideally, you saw how few guys it took, how few of the crew took to move that big, huge ceiling unit, which is over 30 feet wide and about 18 to 20 feet deep. So a typical flat will only weigh, hopefully, maybe, I think, about 100, 120 pounds if it's made out of canvas. Some of them that are made out of um, uh, hard materials that we use, a, a Philippine mahogany called Luan, may get close to about 200, 250 pounds. Okay, next question. How long does it take? How long does it take to change from one opera over into the next? The next uh, typically, we like to do it in about five hours. We'll be able to do that easily tomorrow. Sometimes it takes us as long as eight hours. Showboat, did you all see Showboat? Yeah, that was a fabulous, that was a fabulous event. I'm glad you all came out to see that. Showboat actually took us about eight hours. We had to refocus on Showboat over 700 lighting instruments inside of it. So we had to touch 700 of the different instruments that some of you can see up here coming on every day for Showboat. Okay, next question from Susan Park. Do the performers have a map or a plan on how to move around the stage? Uh, actually, they memorize all of their moves. And some of you may be upstairs. We actually have marks on the deck that help them. They're colored marks. So now keep in mind, we put them in 20-pound dresses. We, we put them in a 90 to 100 degree heat walking around. They have to sing. They have to follow my skill. And they have to find their spot on the deck to be able to know where to stand so that we have them inside of the light. So yes, we do actually map them, and the stage management team and the assistant director actually have 
uh, a book that they follow that says in every single place they're supposed to go. Pretty amazing, isn't it, what it takes to get off the singers. It's really, really, uh, it takes a phenomenal amount of training. Alrighty, next question. I'm sure you six guy. What is the largest crew you've ever had for one opera? For one opera, I believe that that was, uh, to my knowledge, either the ring or Metastopoli. For the ring, at one point, we had just stage crew alone uh, from Local 60. We had over, I think it was uh, 82 to 90 people backstage. For Metastopoli, uh, backstage, we had uh, more than uh, 340 people uh, just to get the performance going. Just amazing. It is, uh, it's an art form that even though we've automated and moved into the 20th century, it still takes a huge amount of people to produce it. You certainly can't do the type of work that this orchestra does without uh, the number of people that, that uh, the original composer set to, uh, to use inside of that particular composition, as well as their particular amount of singers in order to give you the volume of sound that, that uh, uh, you all have come to expect from the San Francisco Opera. All right, next question. Was Violetta really drinking wine? <laughs> uh, no, she was not. Actually, each performer that has to, to drink or eat something on stage, they all have special things that they like us to make up for it. For example, with whiskey, it may be a little bit of watered-down apple juice. It may also be tea with uh, different types of flavoring in it. It's anything that also helps them to keep moisture inside of their mouths. So no, she was not uh, drinking. If anyone backstage can give me the formula for what she was using uh, and drinking this wine tonight, I'll be happy to share with our, our folks out there. We believe it was just water and food coloring, but didn't it look like wine? I thought it did. So now you see we've already set up for activity. So we've got everything preset, we've got everything off stage set for this, uh, and we're just now uh, waiting to see where and when go. The performers are getting ready to come on stage, so they have to go off stage, and they have to make a quick costume change inside this. I know it seems forever, but for them it's a quick costume change, especially when you see a beautiful costume that's coming up. And then we're checking the, the final stages of the lighting here, and then uh, we'll be all set and ready for you guys to go. All right, next question. question. How much time do the singers get with the orchestra? The orchestra, I believe they typically have what's called a since they have a uh, there's a reading that the orchestra has, we typically do three, three to four hour readings, so that's anywhere from nine to twelve hours with the orchestra. And then uh, the uh, performers get typically uh, a one to two sits pro, but sometimes three, so those are each about three hours, so that's about nine hours there. And then they get three uh, stage rehearsals with it, and each one of those are anywhere between three uh, and four hours, so let's say uh, at least 18 hours they get with the orchestra. So uh, we'll take one more question if there is out there. Is there a great All right, one last question. Brendan John Kelly, do you have to make uh, <laughs> any performance adjustments to broadcast live to AT&T Park? We make very few adjustments because we want you all out at AT&T Park to experience everything that these folks are experiencing. And I certainly hope that you all out at AT&T Park come downtown to experience opera here inside of this. Uh, I'm going to ask you all, isn't this fabulous to be inside of the World Memorial Opera? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to tell you, on behalf of everyone here in the San Francisco Opera, I want to say thank you all for coming out. Thank you all of you for the support that you give us. Without you, we could not be as strong as we are in San Francisco. Offering. Thank you again to the Giants and to all of you out at AT&T Park. Enjoy Act 2, Act 3, and Act 4. I hope we'll see you tomorrow for Have a good night. Thank you. Right now, or else we're going to send an usher down to find you, and we're going to put one of these cameras on you, and we're going to locate you. So please turn your cell phones off and enjoy the rest of the show.